Thank you for being here today. We want you to know something about Pure Heart Church. Pure Heart is a place where we ask the big question. The big question is this, if we were gone tomorrow, would our community miss us? Yes, we love Jesus followers. Yes, we love the members of our church family. We are in community together. We get out of rows and into circles. We get to know each other. But here's the thing you need to know about us. We care deeply about our community. We care about what happens outside of the walls of our campuses. We care about people dealing with food scarcity issues. We care about people dealing with mental health and addiction issues. We care about young people today dealing with mental health issues and anxiety and fear. We care about our community. And we believe that God's put a passion in you. He's birthed in you a mission to make a difference in the world around you. We would love to be a part of that story with you. We would love to cheer you on and encourage you. You're in a church that wants to make a difference. Thank you for being a part of Pure Heart. family. So glad that you could all join us online today. And again, we have the awesome Sharana Mays join us on our online campus. So Sharana, thanks for hanging out with us today. You're so welcome. I'm so happy to be here. For everyone watching today, a couple quick things. First off, if you are new to our online community, maybe this is your first time logging in. Welcome, welcome. We are so glad that you're hanging out with us today. Glad you're hanging out yes. and joining us. And if you're new or you haven't had a chance to get to know you yet, head on over to pureheart.org slash online connect and fill out a connect form. Also, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, click a like, go ahead and share this video with a friend. We're in a series looking at how God speaks to us called Whispers. If you missed the first couple of weeks, make sure you go back and watch them. Yeah, it's been such a powerful series, it really has. And no matter what platform you're watching on, go ahead, jump on in the comments. Go ahead, say hi, let us know where you're watching from, the state, the country, wherever. We'd love to hear from you. Another online resource that we wanna share with you is our ASL Interpreted Services. For years, Pure Heart has had a ministry with the deaf at Pure Heart. And we do this because individuals in the deaf community have very limited options for faith growth and church services that are available in the language that they communicate in. So every Saturday as our online campus premieres its services, there's a service that premieres with ASL American Sign Language Interpretation. Yeah. And, and really we spend hours producing this ASL experience every single week. So if you have anyone in your life that's deaf or hard of hearing, make sure to share that service with them. It's so important. Also. We have youth camps coming up in the first couple weeks of June. So if you have a young person, hey, fourth, fifth grade, junior high, high school, make sure to get them signed up for this camp. It is going to be amazing. They will not want to miss this. Now we believe that God has something good to lift you up and to do it in your life as we refocus and encourage our hearts. Yeah, and if we're just gonna go ahead, cast out, fear and lies from our mind. Go ahead, you lean in, all of us lean in. Prepare our hearts for worship as we become more like Jesus for the sake of others. Welcome, welcome to, to church. church. Hey, what's up church family? Thanks for joining us today. Hey, no matter where you're at, let's join in together. Let's sing to our King. And I was buried beneath my shame. Come on, you know it. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I made you. That's right, come on, sing with us. I was breathing, but not alive. Come on, all our failures. And all my failures I've tried.
My soul won't we have freedom because of him And now my freedom is all that I know Oh, somebody testify that the old man Testify on this today together as one voice. I needed a rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break out the way to your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. Come on, when I was broke.
declare it that you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down and you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down and you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me come on stir up your faith today and you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me today. Father, that you are good, you are faithful, you have made a way for us. God, we worship you. Wherever we're at, God, we worship you today with everything that we have. God, great is your faithfulness. Come on, let's sing this together. And walking around these walls, and I thought by now they'd For you have never filled me Come on, he's not done yet And waiting for change to come And knowing the battles won For you have never filled me Come on, we hold on to this truth, his promise still stands Sing with us. Your promise still stands, and great is your faithfulness. Your faithful, I'm still in your, I'm still in your hands, and this is my confidence. You never fail me yet. You never will. God, we know that's the truth today. And I know the night won't last. And your word will come to pass. And my heart will sing your praise again. Oh, yes, it will. And Jesus, you're still enough. And Jesus, you're still enough. together his promise still stands come on and your promise still stands and great is your faithfulness your faith come on we're still in his hands is our confidence i'm still in your hands and this is my confidence you never we hold on to that truth your promise your promise still stands 
to come now in power Cover this land like you've done it before Would you do it again? And Lord, send a revival And Lord, send it now Move of your spirit Heaven break out So come now in power Cover this land like you've done it before Would you do it again? Welcome into the third and final week of our series, Whispers. I know a lot of you have told me how much this series has meant to you. It's been a lot to me personally. I've really needed this series as I get ready for my break this summer. And this message specifically is really helping me as I get ready to say, okay, God, what is it you want to speak into my heart? How do you want to encourage my heart this summer as I take some time to really listen to you, your whispers in my own heart? So welcome in from around the world, around our country, and around the state of Arizona. Thank you so much for joining us today. We, have so, we know you have so many options so many things to listen to, listen to and so many things to do. Thank you for being a part of the service today. So as we get for the ready for this third and final message, I want to start off by saying six times in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, six times and eight times in the letter of Revelation, Jesus makes this urgent statement. It's recorded in Matthew eleven fifteen, 15, one of the six times in the Gospels, this way. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So today I want to share with you two ways that we can position our hearts, to position our ears to hear from God. Two practical ways that we can hear what God wants to say to us because he wants to speak to us. As I've been talking about the last couple of weeks, God wants to speak to you. He wants this personal relationship with you and me. He wants to communicate with us. Oftentimes, we hear what we want to hear. I know this drives my wife nuts. She'll say something and I'll go, what did you say? Or I'll, I'll repeat back what I thought I heard her saying. She goes, I didn't say that. We oftentimes in life, we hear what we want to hear. See, we listen through filters. We listen to the filters of our story, things that we've been through in this life. We listen to the filters of our personality, uh, the way that we're wired, the way we're put together with our personality. We listen through our trauma and through our pain. We have a pain filter and some of the things that we've gone through, some of the hurts and rejections that we faced in life, that affects how we hear things, the way we hear things, how we want to hear things. Jesus, when he said, whoever has ears to hear, here's what the Jewish ear of that day would have heard. They would have heard an echo from Psalm chapter 40 and verse six, when King David says, you take no delight in sacrifices or offerings now that you have made me listen. A better translation of that last part is this. Now that you have opened my ears. The Hebrew word for open is archaeological in nature. It literally means, check this out, this is so good. It means to excavate or, you're going to like this, to dig through dense material. Maybe you grew up and you heard this saying growing up, how can I get this through your thick skull? That's exactly what they're talking about. How do we dig through dense material? But it also means, and this is so powerful, the word open means to pierce, which we believe, I believe, which led many Bible scholars to believe that when King David was making his point, you have made me to listen, it was actually going back to an ancient ritual outlined in the Old Testament at, the Mount, the, uh, at Mount Sinai. And what, what David is alluding to was this moment that after an Israelite would serve for six years, maybe a, a servant had to pay off a debt. After they served for six years, that Hebrew servant would be set free in the seventh year. But if the servant really loved his master and, and they didn't want to be set free, they wanted to spend the rest of their lives serving this leader, serving this master, this person, they would be given the option to become a servant for life. And the physical sign was to be pierced through your ear. They'd take them maybe to, to, to an area and they would pierce this lobe, the ear. They would pierce their ear. That would be a sign to everybody that they were a free, get this, bond servant. That they freely gave themselves into servanthood to this person. 
Actually, in the New Testament, James alludes to this. James, the half-brother of Jesus, he says this in James chapter 1 in his introduction. Listen to what James says. This letter is from James. Watch this. A slave, everybody say it, slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. This word slave here actually carries the idea of a free bond servant. And a bond servant would be taken to the doorpost of a house when they freely give themselves to someone and they would use an awl to punch through the ear and they would pierce their ear as signifying that they had given themselves to this master. James starts his letter by saying, I am a bond servant. I am freely giving my life to the resurrected King of Kings, Jesus Christ. I have become his servant for life. I want to do what he asked me to do. One more thing. The Latin word for obey literally means to give ear. To give ear, meaning this. It literally means giving God your ear and saying, God, you get to be the first word. You get to be the last word. God, you're going to be the most important voice in my life. So here we go today. I want to give us two practical ways that we could position our hearts, position our ears to hear what God wants to whisper into our souls. I've heard that sound mixers, sound engineers, in the film industry, the music industry, before they go into a recording, they will actually take time out in complete silence. So get away in complete silence and just sit there and let their ears relax and recalibrate through absolute silence. And these acoustic ecologists call this process ear cleaning. Okay, we, we think of ear cleaning as something else. It's kind of gross. For them, it's cleaning their ears out, cleaning out their eardrums, all that God has made so technical, so amazing in the way that we hear things to clean out our ears, to, to silence every, all the noise around us so that we can once again cleanse our ears so that we can be ready to hear what we need to hear. That's what they do before they go record a film or go record uh, music of any kind. Now, white noise, many of you go to bed at night with white noise. You have these sound machines. Uh, for me, it's the sound of waves, all right? But white noise contains every frequency that the human ear can hear. And because of this, it's difficult to hear any frequency because all the frequencies are coming at you full blast in the area of what we would call white noise. And I believe that chronic noise, white noise, is one of the greatest hindrances to our spiritual growth in this life. That's a big reason why, as I get ready to take my break this summer, I'm making sure that I take some time to slow down, to hear what God wants me to hear. I need to find some time to be silent. I, I, I was thinking about it the other day, and, and not, this isn't like boo-hoo and poor Pastor Dan and look at all the stuff he has to go through, but I was thinking about it the other day. It's actually been two years. This, this coming June, it'll be two years since I've had 24 hours go by where I haven't been in contact with the church. Talking about business, talking about finance, talking about all the things that are going on. For the last two years, every day, even when I took a little bit of a break last year, every day I was still calling in, checking in with the office. I really need this time. I'm be honest with you, my wife needs me to have this time to just focus on her, to focus on our kids, to be present with her because the last couple of years, especially this last year and a half through the pandemic, have just been absolutely crazy. So I'm looking for, we have great teachers. You're, you're not going skip to a, <clears throat> skip a beat. We have so many amazing leaders that are going to be coming in this summer and teaching and encouraging you. You don't want to miss a single weekend. But this message is important to me because I've got to find some time. Maybe you this summer, I'm praying for you this summer, find some time when you can just get alone, quiet yourself before God and hear what he has to he say because there's so much going on. Uh, this last week, I sat down with one of our leaders, Pastor Bill Stewart, great mentor and encourager in my life. And Bill said, let's do this exercise, Dan. Let's, let's just throw up on a whiteboard in one of our, in our classrooms. We went into a, one of our classrooms. Let's just throw up on a whiteboard all the things that you're doing, all the things that you're responsible for. So we began to write all this stuff down that I'm involved with. And we wrote down everything we're doing with School Connect, everything we're doing with Resilient Church and Trauma Informed. We just started writing everything down. Then we started with my schedule, Monday through Sunday, everything that I do. We filled this entire whiteboard with my schedule. <laughs> Speaking of white noise, this whiteboard, when we looked at it, it was like, that's the white noise. There's so much going on. And so when we finished this exercise of just putting everything up on the board, I actually had to step out and take a phone call. When I came back in from taking my phone call, Bill was standing, my friend was standing right there in front of the board, and he just, he, in silence, just shaking his head back and forth like this. And he goes, all he said was, wow. Like, I don't even know where to begin. I, and his whole goal, he's helping me kind of take everything that I'm doing, 
so that for the next 15 years, um, before I, I, if Jesus doesn't return and I have an opportunity to retire and, and move on, move <laughs> and retire, he's going to take the, he's going to help me get ready for this next big stretch of my life to organize all that I'm doing so I can be more effective. But we had to throw it all up on the board, take a look at it and go, okay, how do we reorganize this thing? And he's like, wow, Dan, you really need a break. You need some time to just think and pray about what are these priorities going to be and all that God is allowing pure heart to do. And I'm really looking forward to that process. Now, Henry Nouwen, one of my favorite authors, he was an author of the book, The Way of the Heart, which I read years ago. He said this, silence is an act of war against the competing voices within, around us and within us. Isn't that good? The, it's, it's going to war against all these voices that are all around us and within us. Some of us, we need to go to war against the voices, against the white noise of our life. I, I love this next statement that now and made. He said this, he said, when you listen with great attentiveness to the voice that calls you beloved, you will discover within yourself a desire to hear that voice longer and more deeply. Man, when you actually can quiet yourself enough all the competing voices and all the statements, your own voices, your, the own, your own negative self-talk and the, and the things that people say all around you and listen with great attentiveness to be intentional to the voice that calls you beloved, to your creator God who says, I love you, I made you on purpose. You will discover within yourself a desire to hear that voice, to get alone, to get silent, to get quiet, to hear his voice, his voice whisper to you longer and even more deeply. I want to take a quick moment and I want you to listen to some folks, some friends of ours, part of our church family, friends that we've connected with in, in a couple of the churches. Just listen to what these guys have to say about what it means for them to hear God's voice. Check this out. God was prompting me, leading me to pure heart to work on staff and just, I didn't know how that was going to work out. I wasn't confident that that was the direction that I was supposed to take. So I took time and I prayed. I had a very close friend pray with me and I just began to ask the Lord to give me different confirmations. It wasn't an overnight ordeal. It was, Lord, here's the place that I believe that you have me in currently. Here's the place that I believe that you're telling me to go to and I do not know what to do, but I know that I wanna be in your will. Will you help me to hear you deeper, understand you clearer and truly know the direction that you have for me. At the end of high school, I had an opportunity for free ride scholarship, which of course my parents really, really, really thought that was the will of God for my life. Rightfully so, because they didn't want to pay for it. During that season, I also had some opportunities with a marketing department of the company I was working for. I was actually looking at one of the proposals I made, which is huge for someone who's fresh out of high school. That just doesn't happen. And I remember going to church on a Wednesday night and there was a group from Youth of the Mission who I had gone on a short-term missions trip with a couple years before. They happened to be at my church and I hadn't seen them in the last couple years. And as I'm saying hey to him and everything afterwards, I talked to Eric and he said, you should come with us. For the next three months, we're gonna be on the road and living out of a van. And I laughed at him basically and said, that's just not gonna happen. That's the last thing I need on my plate right now is to disappear on a road trip for three months. And he said, just, just pray about it. And man, I should have known better at that moment, but I was like, absolutely, I'll pray about it. And little did I know that in taking that time and praying about it, that God would push everything else aside, the busyness of everything, all of the things that were weighing on my mind, and that he would push me in the direction of actually letting go of everything. For years, I ran away from God. I mean, I was born and raised in a Christian home, but for some reason, I just thought, why would God want to have anything to do with someone like me? Well, that idea, that, th that negative thought led me to making a lot of decisions that weren't the right decisions for me. And I got to a place where I was struggling with hope. I was struggling with peace. I, I just didn't know what to do. It was in the midst of that that my dad actually passed away in a car accident, which just sent me spiraling downward. I got to a place where I was contemplating committing suicide and ending everything, but I was too scared to do that. And it was a friend that met me right where I was and he asked me one question. He said, why don't you give Jesus a chance? 
And that one question changed everything for me because just to keep him quiet, I said, sure, I'll, I'll talk to God. And I thought, okay, God, you're up there. So I said, God, if you're there, if you care about me, then I want to hear it from your mouth. I'm tired of hearing from everyone else. You tell me. It's good stuff. Now, here we go. The first thing, number one, this is the number one practice I want to talk about for just a moment of what we can do to hear God's whisper, to hear God speak to us. And we're going to find this in Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10. This is what David the king writes. Be still and know that I am God. It's just that simple. Be still. Shh. Quiet yourself. Be still and then know that as we are still, as we're, as we're blocking out and going to war against those through silence of all those voices, all those things that are circling around us, swirling around us, in that moment we will know, we will know, God, you love me. You have a plan for my life. He'll begin to speak to us and remind us of who he's made us to be. Be still and know that he is God, that I am God is what God says. Isn't it interesting how our default setting is always ASAP, as soon as possible? In fact, even in our relationship with God, we want him to do the things in our life that we need him to do as soon as possible. Waiting on him can be so difficult. And I think sometimes on purpose, he takes his time so that we will slow down our pace, have a better rhythm, a more sustainable pace in life, and so that we can hear him in the midst of the busyness and the hurriedness of our lives. Here's what our souls need to, for us to figure out. I think our souls are desperate for us to figure this out. And here are two statements, and I want you to meditate on this for just a moment. Sometimes slower is faster, and sometimes quieter is louder. Just, just say that with me. Come on, just say it with me. Sometimes slower is faster. It's the old tortoise and the hare situation. And sometimes quieter is louder. When, when, we, when we quiet all the outside noises, that are waging war against our soul, God's voice gets turned up louder in our own spirit. On our, my break that I'm getting ready to take, a couple of practices that I'm gonna work on. One is I'm going to get up. My goal right now is to get up at least and spend 20 minutes in silence every day. I just need to build a new rhythm. Whenever I do this, like especially on my day off, I get one day, one day, one Sabbath day a week on my day off. When I take that day off, I actually find time to just be quiet and I feel so much stronger. I feel so much better and I need to build that into the rhythm of my everyday life, day in and day out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice taking 20 minutes every day when I first start my day just, to, just like a sound engineer going into the sound booth. I'm going to clear everything. I want to be quiet before the Lord and listen to what he has to say and get my heart positioned, get my soul ready for the adventure that God has for me that day. And then at the end of my break, I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to do a 24-hour silent retreat. <laughs> you need to pray for me because if you know me, if any of you know me out there well, you know being quiet for more than like a minute is hard for me. I love to talk. I love to talk to people. I love people to talk to me. I like to be around people. I just love people, all right? So for me to take 24 hours and be silent is going to be a journey, but I can't wait to see what God does with that moment of silence in my life. And I really believe that God has laid on my heart. He's whispered to me, Daniel, you need to do this. You need to learn to practice silence. It's interesting, a friend of mine, just before I came over today to work on this message for all of you, he, he texted me and he was telling me that he does this word game. And in the word game, it'll give you a word and then you gotta see how many words you can get out of that word. And he, he had the word listen. And so he was looking at the word listen. And you know the word he found within the word listen that uses the exact same letters just in different order? Silent. Isn't that the coolest thing? Listen. And out of listen, you can get the word silent. Those of you who have ears to hear, we need to listen, get quiet, so that we can understand and hear what God is trying to say to us. So I, I wanna pause for just a moment. I normally don't do this with our online community, but I wanna pause for a moment. And I wanna give you a moment to just think about how you're going to take some time to build a rhythm. Just take a minute, we're just gonna take 30 seconds. I know, it's a long time. 30 seconds to just say, how are you gonna to begin to get still in your life, to quiet your life, to know that he is God? I talked about what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to take 20 minutes at the beginning of each day. I'm going to take this 24-hour this 24 hour prayer silent uh, retreat. What is something right now the Lord wants you to do? I just want you to take a moment and just think about it for the next few seconds, and I'll be right back. Just think about it.
I know, even just watching this online, just taking that much time, you're like, what, what's going on? Why, this is a long time. We don't do well with silence. We don't do well with quieting our soul. So I wanna encourage, that's the first thing, practical thing that we're gonna do. We're going to find time to be quiet. We're gonna quiet our souls, we're gonna be still and know that he is God. Now, the second practice has to do with the way that we read the Bible. As we talked about last week, there's seven ways that I talked about, seven ways, there's more than that, but seven ways that God speaks to us. And the clearest way, when we open our Bible, we open God's word, he opens his mouth. This is the clearest way we can hear from God. But there's, there's two general ways in which we read the Bible. And I'm going to give you some fancy Latin words here for a second, all right? The first one is this, lecto continuum. Lecto continuum. Lecto continuum is all about big picture. It's getting the, the, the context of what it is that's written. Like we did this as a church family leading into Easter. We started in January and we said, let's read all four gospels all the way up to Easter. And what we were doing is we were getting the big picture, the big idea of, the Jesus, of Jesus' story. We were looking at his story through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and getting the big idea. Dia. We read a chapter a day all the way up to Easter. And that's a great way to read the Bible. It's important for us to get the big picture, to read the story. But there's a second way that slows down and really digs into what God wants to say. And I believe this is the way that we can really hear what God wants to say through the Bible, through his word. And that second way is lecto divina. Lecto divina. Lecto divina is often likened to a great meal. Like think of the best restaurant you've ever been to. Like for me, the greatest restaurant I've ever eaten at is Fogo de Chao. Oh my badness. Fogo de Chao. It's a Brazilian steakhouse. And, and literally, they give you a card when you come in. This card is green on one side, red on the other. You got it. Stop and go. And so if your card is on green, they just keep bringing meats. When I say meat, I mean 13 different types of meat. These guys and gals walk around with these huge skewer, skewers and they carve off meat onto your plate. It's incredible. And so, and then along with that, they have these great side dishes, but who really cares about the side dishes? They have an amazing salad bar. Haven't seen it, heard it's amazing, but 13 types of meat. At some points, they literally bring you meat wrapped in bacon. When the meats that are wrapped in bacon show up, I just begin to cheer. I just want to cheer them on. I want to encourage them to come back to my table with the bacon wrapped meat. Whether it's chicken, I don't care. Whether it's some kind of steak, it's wrapped in bacon, people. It's an amazing restaurant. They also have these little um, rolls, these cheddar, like these cheese rolls that, that you take them and they, you barely have to pull them. They just fall apart in your hand. They're delicious. I've eaten several hundred of them and they are just incredible. Fogo de Chao, best restaurant I have ever eaten in. Take your credit card. It is not cheap. All right. Here's what I want you to know. Do you enjoy the Bible like that? Do, do, do you enjoy the Bible like the greatest place you've ever eaten? When, when you're reading God's word and you're letting God's word feed your soul, is, is it for you like, come on, come on, God. I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I love what you're saying to me. You, know, you read a story in the Old Testament and, and you listen to King David's story. You look at Joseph and what he had to overcome and you're like, it's so good. You, you read through the New Testament, you look at the Gospels and what Jesus said and his teaching, you go, it's so good. You read the epistles, you listen to what Paul writes in the New Testament and he challenges the different churches that he wrote to and you said, I need that for my own soul. Are you reading the Bible like Lecto Divina? So I, I believe there, there are four, I'm gonna talk about four ways that we can read the Bible through this Lecto Divina style. And so the first one, the first one is this, it's reading. Just reading the Bible. That's the first bite, if you will, of this great meal. It's reading. We've talked about that already, so we'll go on to the second one. The second bite of this great meal is meditating. And what I mean by meditating is really thinking about what you just read. And not just thinking about what you just read. It's not just reading the Bible, it's letting the Bible read you. When you read about loving your enemy, you have to stop and pause and ask yourself the question, Am I loving my enemies? Am I, am I willing to love those who have hurt me or spoken ill against me? Am I, am I doing that? Am I, am I forgiving people? You read about forgiveness, go, wait a minute. Am I forgiving people? You, you read a story, maybe, like I mentioned earlier, the story of Joseph, one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament. You read that story of Joseph and you go, man, am I willing to never give up, to trust God in the midst of difficult circumstances? How am I doing with the circumstances in my life right now? It's literally letting the Bible read you to analyze your attitudes, to expose your heart, 
And you got to slow down to do that. You got to chew on it. Meditating is the chewing on God's word and thinking about it and looking at it and asking yourself some difficult questions. And here's what I, here's what I know. Oftentimes the pace of my life <laughs> determines the pace at which I read the Bible. And way too often, I just default to lecto continuum. I'm just reading for big picture. I'm, sometimes I'm reading to give to you. I'm reading, reading, reading so I can feed you, reading, reading, reading so I can feed you. That's some of the most dangerous times for my soul. I can't just read, read, read so I can give it to you. I gotta read, read, read so I can put it in here. Because if it, if it goes from here just to there, that's not good for my own soul. But if it goes from here to here, and then to you, that's a much better process. So I have to slow down. So I read it, then I meditate on it, and here's the third, this is, this is so important. Prayer. Prayer is when I ask the Holy Spirit who dwells within me. I ask him, I say, Holy Spirit, would you show me what you want me to see? Would you show me what I need to see? I don't know if you listening today, if you've had this experience where you've read the same story or you've read the same section of scripture, been reading through the Bible and you read it again, and you get something totally different out of it, than you did before. Not like a totally different meaning, but a totally different application for your life. A totally different insight on that principle that you just read from God's Word. That's the Holy Spirit working in your life, helping you see God's Word deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And you're not going to get there if you just speed read. You got to slow down. You got to meditate. And then you got to take some time and pray and say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to see? How do you want me to own this? How do you want me to get this into my heart? And, and the interesting thing is, when we ask the Holy Spirit to show me, to show us what we need to see, the idea there is to quicken. Literally, what I'll say sometimes to the Holy Spirit, I'll say, would you quicken to my heart, and we don't use that word very often anymore in our, in our language, would you quicken to my heart something that I'm reading today? Let it come alive to me. A matter of fact, when I was growing up, one of my pastors, he always said, read till it burns, put it down, and think about it. That's a great way to read the book. Read till something just, just boom, lights your heart on fire. Stop and think about that. So I asked the Holy Spirit, show me, quicken to my mind what you want me to see. This certain words will just jump off the page or jump off my Bible app right into my heart. And this word quicken is so good. Matter of fact, 11 times in Psalm 119, largest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119, 11 times the word quicken is repeated over and over and over again. The word quicken carries with it the idea of a physical resurrection. That when Jesus rose from the dead, he was quickened. His physical body was quickened and he rose, he came back to life. When we read God's word and we ask the Holy Spirit to quicken God's word to our soul, basically what happens is there's parts of our soul that'll come back to life. And God wants to see faith, hope, love resurrected in our own soul. When we read God's word, we slow down, we meditate on it, we ask the Holy Spirit to quicken his word to our heart, our hearts come back to life. Areas of our lives where we just feel dead or spiritually dry can be rehydrated and given life again. Now the fourth one, this is important. The fourth one is where the word goes from just our head to our heart to our feet. And what I mean by this fourth one is simply this. The fourth bite is doing. Actually doing what you've just read, what the Holy Spirit has just quickened to your heart. Doing. Here's how James says this in James chapter 1 verse 22. James says this, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. And I love the fact that James says you must do what it says. He doesn't say, and I would suggest, or if you feel like it, or if it makes sense to you. No, it says do what it says. If the Bible calls you to forgive, forgive. To love, to love. To be generous, to be generous. To do what it says. Otherwise, James goes on, you are only fooling yourself. You're just thinking that you're getting more spiritual. You think by reading a lot, and I read five chapters today. But in those five chapters, was anything quickened to your heart? Anything bring your heart to life? And then let me ask you this. Are you applying anything that you've read? Are we applying it to our lives? Are we actually living it out? You see, the ancient Hebrew idea of knowing someone or something was all about experience. And it's true today as it, it's true today as it was then. You, you really want to know someone? You have to experience them, spend time with them. You know how I know my wife, Nicole, so well, so well? Because of any other human being on planet Earth, I spend the most time with her. And I know her because we have experienced 23 years 
of experience, living life, doing life together. And every time we read and we meditate and we pray and we obey, we have the opportunity to experience God deeper. When we do what God has to say, when we trust him, we get to experience him. And we actually can learn to hear his voice even better and better the more we experience him because we know him better. We know his heart. We know his voice. We know when he's talking to us. So here's part two of the video that we showed earlier of people that they've not only heard God's word, but these folks are living it out and doing what God has told them to do. I knew he was saying something, but I just, you know, our humanness, we want to be sure. We don't want to make the wrong mistake. We don't want to mess up. But just taking that time to not just talk to him, but to actually listen, even if I heard nothing in that particular moment, but knowing that he's faithful to respond to me and to give me clarity as well as peace with the answer. And then one day I finally was like, all right, I think I'm hearing clearly, and this is the direction that you have for me. And I went through that process, and now, I get to work at an amazing church. I get to do amazing things. We get to make a difference in um, the lives of those within our church, those that visit our church, and those in the surrounding community. So I am so glad that I took the time to pray as well as listen to God's voice. After I went home that night and spent some time actually praying about it like I said I would, it felt like all of the other arguments that were going on in my head of why I shouldn't go all of those just kind of disappeared. They kind of melted away. And I felt this unmistakable draw. Like God was saying, it's okay. It's okay, you should go. You need to do this, you need to go. And two days later, I was on that van, trekking across the country and then up into Canada, spending the next three months on the road, living out of a suitcase, all because of that moment of hearing God say, it's okay, do it. What was great is after all of that time with this organization, when I came back home to Phoenix, the very first place they called me and said, hey, we'd love for you to come on out and speak to our youth group was Pure Heart. And so I came out, spoke to the youth group, and then was asked to lead worship from there. And I had no idea how much of a, an actual directional change this one decision uh, would have, the, the power that that would have on my life moving forward. It's been amazing. And sure enough, I don't know if it was an audible voice or if I just heard it in my heart, but I heard him say, you're my son, I love you. You're my son, I love you. And I was like, okay, I get it. God, I will do anything you want. And so from that day, everything changed for me. In Ephesians 3.20, there's a verse that says, God can do immeasurably more than you can dare to imagine. And if I can be honest, I, I didn't really believe that verse because I was like, can God, can you do more than I can dare to imagine? Sure enough, he has, because when I gave my life to Christ, I said, God, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to go into the world and tell people what I did for you. And I thought, how do you go into the world? Well, because of technology today, we can reach the world at the click of a button. But long story short, after my time with corporate, I actually got on staff at a church and I became the church online pastor. And over the past 10 years, it's been incredible to see so many people turn their life towards Jesus. And for me, I got to be just like the friend was to me. I got to ask people that lived all over the world, hey, I know you're struggling. Why don't you give Jesus a chance? I'm telling you one step of obedience. When you walk in faith, God can do immeasurably more than you can dare to imagine. Such great stories. And I'm so grateful for all of them sharing those stories with us today. And so I want to end this series with an outline, if you will, from Henry Blackaby. Henry Blackaby wrote an amazing book years and years and years ago now called Experiencing God. In Henry Blackaby's book, Experiencing God, he talks about seven realities for experiencing God. Now, what you need to know about Henry Blackaby is this. The man, for many decades of his life, he would wake up at four o'clock in the morning, and from four to 8 a.m., for four hours a day, he would spend time alone with God. Henry Blackaby is one of the deepest teachers I've ever read. Incredible insights. He didn't get those by chance. It was by spending time quieting himself before the Lord, blocking all the white noise of life, getting into God's word, reading and studying. Matter of fact, 
He gave each one of his kids, I believe he had four children, he gave each one of his children a complete Bible that was fully marked up from Genesis to Revelation, completely marked up with his insights and thoughts and things that God shared with him. Think about that. Four Bibles, completely underlined, highlighted, marked up, things written in the, in the margins. He gave them all one Bible to all four of his kids. That's how many times he had studied through, meditated through, chewed on the Word of God. And then he began to put it into practice. And this is what Blackaby says are the seven realities for truly experiencing God. He said this, number one, God is always at work around us. He said, you have to understand that. God is always moving. He's always doing something. God is always at work. Number two, the second reality is God is pursuing, always pursuing a love relationship with us. His motive towards us is always love. Three, God is inviting us to join him in his work. Matter of fact, one of my favorite statements that Blackaby makes, he says, look for where God is moving and join him in it. Most of the time in life, we just get our idea of where we want to move and we ask God to join us in where we're moving. Blackaby said it's the opposite. Look for where God's moving because he's always moving and he loves you and he wants you. He's inviting you to join him in his work. The fourth thing he says is this, God speaks to us by the Holy Spirit to reveal our next step. I'm paraphrasing that a little bit, but to reveal what is our next step? What is it we're going to do? And number five, he says this invitation to join him in that work always leads to a crisis of belief. (laughs) God, you want me to do what? You want me to say what? You want me to go where? You want me to do what? You want me to forgive him to to love her? Are you kidding me? It always brings us to a point where we just go in our own flesh, in our own feelings, in our own soul. we, We go, I don't know if I'm able to. I don't know if I can do that. And it's exactly where God wants us to be. Because some of the greatest steps that God calls us to take, we could never take on our own. We're gonna need his strength, we're gonna need his power. It brings us to this crisis of belief, like God, I don't know if I can do this. And then we have a point, then we have a step to take. This is big, number six, sixth reality. We must adjust our life to join God. Make the decision to simply do this, to do what he's asked us to do, to obey him. And then the seventh reality, so beautiful, we come to know God better by experience as we obey obey him again and again and again. We need to practice silence. I wanna encourage you, find some time this summer, find this some time throughout your day to just get alone with God. Quiet your soul, get a different rhythm of life. Your soul needs to catch up to the pace of your life. And secondly, Lecto Divina. Begin to read God's word, begin to read his word every single day with the purpose of saying, God, I'm gonna read this, but then I'm gonna meditate, I'm gonna think about what it's saying to me, and then I'm gonna ask the Holy Spirit to quicken what it is you want me to know, and then, Lord, once I know what you want me to know, I'm going to live it out. And you will get better and better at not only knowing God's voice, but following Him deeply. You'll know Him better. You're gonna find more rest for your soul. Your life will be more effective. You're gonna have a greater impact. I've loved this series series has been good for me. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to go back through it again while I'm on break this summer because I need this series. And I want to encourage you, if you just tuned in today for the first time, go back to week one. We had two weeks before this. Go back to week one. We talked a lot about how God whispers to us. And then last week, the seven ways that God speaks to us. And then I want to encourage you, you're probably going to listen to this message again or share it with some friends. We, the most important thing in our life is to hear God's voice and to follow his direction. That's where life is found. I love you, family. It's an honor to be able to encourage you and teach you every single week. So before we end this series, like we do every week, we wanna take a moment and ask a very important question. Have you asked Jesus to be the leader of your life? We never like to end one of our services without giving you the opportunity to make the most important decision of your life, to say, Jesus, I wanna follow you. I wanna surrender my life to you. And so today, maybe for the first time, you need to say, Jesus, I need you to lead my life. I want to surrender my life to you. I need your love, hope, and forgiveness. Or maybe it's a rededication of your life to him. Maybe years ago, you would ask Christ to come into your life. But man, now you're, you're listening to this message today, and maybe we could be honest, we could have a conversation. You would tell me the story of, I've been going so fast, doing so much, running so hard. I just feel like I'm not close to him anymore. I feel like I've actually ran away from him. And so I want to encourage you right now, maybe today's a moment of rededication of your life to Christ. So if it's a first-time decision or rededication to Jesus today, would you pray this with me in your heart? God will hear you. Say this, Lord Jesus, right now in this moment, I commit my life to you. I trust you with my life. This is important. In your own words, say this, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. You know what it is. You know what it is. Thank you for your forgiveness. 
Jesus, fill me with your hope. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your strength and your love and your joy and your peace. I need you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. God bless you guys. Love you. Can't wait to see you soon. Every week, we celebrate the things that God is doing through the people, resources, and influences that he's blessed Pure Heart with. This last year, Pure Heart Church knew it was being called to show a divided nation a united church. Not just because of the racial tragedy seen this last year, as tragic as those are, but because the heartbreaking reality is, is that many places, Sundays have become one of the most segregated days of the week. Covenant City Church also felt led to stand up and lean into that vision. And so this Easter, the Peoria campus was relaunched with Covenant City Church and Pure Heart Church becoming one congregation, one family. And since then, it's modeled the love of Christ with believers of different church cultures, different backgrounds, every week embracing one another, raising hands in worship together, joining together, building a new community, a church community of diverse, multi-generational people from all across the Phoenix Valley. A church where serving and loving our Lord together is the focus, irregardless of the color of their skin or their church background. Every week, this congregation is growing, and not just only on Sundays, but also on Wednesday night prayer nights, where people are coming together, finding growth and healing from their past hurts. There have been 10 baptisms that have happened on that campus since Easter, and over 700 people being reached weekly on campus and through the Peoria online broadcast, a sevenfold reach beyond what was happening just earlier this year. God has blessed and anointed his vision more than we ever imagined as we walked out his plans for his church. So as you put your tithes and offerings in the mail, as you're giving online, text to give, or in the Pure Heart app, no, these are the types of things your faithfulness and your generosity is going to support. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, that in a challenging world, in challenging times, God, you're allowing us as the church to be a light, to be the truth, and to come together and show unity in you, Heavenly Father, because you have created us all to be one in you, Lord. And we thank you right now that as the tithes and offerings are coming into Pure Heart and as they're pouring back into the different ministries that are happening, God, and into things like the Peoria Campus, God, that people are being reached, lives are being changed and impacted, God. We thank you for each and every person out there that may be struggling, God, right now. And right now, they don't they don't know where their next paycheck, their next meal is coming from, Heavenly Father. Bless them, touch them, encourage them, give them direction, show them a next step, God. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. God gives us wisdom with our finances. In your name, amen. I continue to be grateful for your family as you continue to walk in our mission, standing in the gaps, being the hands and feet of Christ. So be encouraged. Have an amazing week. Keep your focus on him as we continue to love like Christ for the sake of others in new and exciting ways. And we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.